My name's Wayne Johns. I'm a fashion, beauty and advertising photographer. And I'm also a big Fujifilm GFX 50S mirrorless medium format shooter as well for my commercial work. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions lately with regards to my workflow from what people have been seeing online, some screen grabs and things. And people have been asking me, how do you use Capture One Pro with the GFX 50S? Because uh, natively, you can't actually pull the raw files into Capture One Pro, uh, which is correct. Now, Lightroom is its friend. You can edit the raw files in Lightroom as standard, and you can even shoot tethered if you wish. Um, but for my commercial work, my workflow, I'm a big Capture One Pro fan. Um, and they're the same with any camera system. Um, there are little workarounds, um, little hints and tips and tricks that you can use to be able to make that work for you in your in your process. So I've just uh, got a screen record on at the moment so you can see what I do. I've just set up a little sample file so people can follow my workflow through so that I can pull it into Capture One Pro. So let's get straight into that. First of all, what we need to do is we need to take our raw files and we need to put them uh, convert them into DNGs. OK, so Anybody can go online and download Adobe DNG Converter. It's free. Um, and you can do this with other camera brands as well if you if you come across this problem where um, Capture One Pro may not support your system. Um, as far as I'm aware, don't quote me on that though. So Adobe DNG Converter. So the first thing we need to do is select the folder of images we want to convert. Now on my desktop, I've already put a little folder together with sample images and I've just called this raw DNG. Um, there are my images and here on the left I've also prepared um, my destination folder which I've already titled DNG so let's open that one up okay so that's opened that now I'm gonna I'm going to um, tell it where I want it and that's in there in DNG I've already got some files in there um, which, which I'll delete quickly um, or else you're gonna get doubled up images in there so let's just get rid of those Okay, there we are, gone. Right, so yeah, there it goes, in there, select. There we are, sorry about that. Uh, and all you do then, basically, um, just watch section three because um, I put some name changing in there, um, just the way my workflow runs. Uh, that there is the model's name in this particular instance. Um, all you do is then press convert and you get a little um, progress window there, tells you what's going on what's processing, what's waiting. Obviously, if you've got a big shoot, you know, two, three, four, five hundred images and you want to sort of use this workflow, then um, it's going to take you a little bit of time, especially with GFX files as the RAWs are about 120 megs. OK, it's a big file to convert. So if you've got a whole workflow um, to batch convert, those will, will take quite some time. So you might want to go and make a cup of tea or something. OK, so that's all done. So I just hit OK on that and then we just quit that. That's fine. Now, that's converted them to DNG, but still um, I can't pull them into Capture One Pro. Now, I have heard some people online um, have pulled them straight into Capture One Pro after that conversion with the latest version of Capture One, but I don't seem to have that. And I am up to date with my Capture One as well, um, being a subscriber. So the next stage is we need to uh, just change the EXIF uh, data in there. You can download an EXIF editor. Um, you can get these online as well. Uh, this is a particular one I've got, uh, the brand of that one. It's literally EXIF editor. Um, you can type that in and download it. Um, and then you basically need to go and select your files. Um, so go to our DNG folder and let's open that one with the images in and you'll see it'll pull them all in as a batch. And you'll get all your EXIF data down the right hand side here. Now manually, to make this work, we just need to change uh, camera make, okay, to phase one. Um, and then I've been using IQ 250. Okay, I've got it set up as a preset here. Okay, so I go from Fuji to Phase. Now remember, once you've converted these and you take them then um, for processing and retouch, that this EXIF data remains. So once you've got your selected and chosen images, your final images, you might want to bring them back in here and, and then convert them back so that your camera data does read uh, Fujifilm GFX 50S again, or else it will remain with that uh, in, the, in the EXIF data and be quite confusing for people, especially when it comes to lenses and stuff. So I've set them up as presets. I just click that and it jumps back and forth. Okay, so all we do then is hit process again uh, and off it goes. Just goes through changing that information uh, on all those images I've selected and um, it doesn't take long at all. And there we are. That's done. Okay, so now if we open up our Capture One Pro 
and I go to my DNG folder, there they are. You can see them all in there. Um, so now I can edit my images um, in Capture One Pro, just like I normally would. Now you've got to remember, you kind of lose your color profiles a little bit um, when you come to Capture One Pro. And you see, um, I don't think you can see it on your monitors, but it looks a bit red in here. Now, to change your, your profiles, um, you've got an ICC profile here in Capture One Pro. Um, it's currently on uh, IQ uh, 250, which seems to have a bit more saturation in it than um, the standard Adobe DNG, which is obviously what we converted it into. Um, but you can change that. You can just drop down there and change that to DNG, but you will notice the saturation vanishes just like that. I'm just hovering over that and you can see, okay, you can see that changing. In fact, let's just put these up side, <coughs> excuse me, side by side. And um, let's double them up. Let's just clone that one for you so you can see both. And I'm going to change this one to Adobe DNG. Uh, and that one remains on IQ 150, which you can see over here. All right, so let me put both of these together. And um, you can see my left one selected is phase one IQ 250 and my right hand one is DNG neutral. Now that's your own preference. Um, I kind of use both sometimes, um, depending on what I'm shooting, uh, what my colors are, what my scene is, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, But you know, you would still use your eyedropper tool on your white balance card and bring that in as normal and just hit that. And there you go, puts a bit more yellow in there as you can see. Um, but it's personal preference, so that's entirely up to you. But that basically is it, you know? I just then edit my RAW files as I normally would. Um, and then I can just pull these images through and, and work on these as normal. Obviously these haven't been color corrected yet, um, but that is as simple as the process gets. So I hope that's uh, useful for everybody and I um, hope people can follow that through. And those of you that are GFX 50S users, um, that's the way to do it, not too hard at all. Convert them to DNG and then open them with an EXIF editor and change that information over. Um, and then you can open them and pull them into Capture One Pro. But remember, once you output to either your TIFF or your PSDs or however you retouch and edit, once you finish that editing, um, or once you output, make sure you pull them back through the EXIF editor to um, put that information, camera information back in um, so that it rings true when people are reading your, your files. It is, of course, uh, until Fujifilm bring out their own uh, RAW editor, which is uh, due in November. So that's already been announced. So look out for that one then. But until then, it's uh, just a nice little workaround. OK, that's my little to do. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to some comments. OK, bye.